uh, today, I'm, as I as mentioned earlier, it's a joint work with uh, PIDS colleagues, Mark and Jean, and we are going to talk about the uh, fintech landscape in, in the Philippines. So just an introduction, fintech in the Philippines have been gaining more traction in recent years, heightened by the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. So we've mentioned that the, the mobility restrictions are actually the ones that are pushing uh, this um, uh, uh, industry forward. You know? So exponential, we've seen exponential growth in digital payments and that have uh, encouraged more bank and non-bank financial services to enter the market, providing diversified financial products and services. However, despite such developments, the industry's financial inclusion remains uh, lagging behind our ASEAN neighbors. And uh, simultaneously, issues on reliability of systems and consistency of regulations are beginning to emerge. So this paper, um, maybe just to give you a, a, a preview of what we are, it's going to be discussed. So what we have seen is that uh, an increasing no there's an increasing number of fintechs uh, in the country, particularly in um, the uh, verticals of payments, lendings, and um, banking technology. And uh, we've also seen some increasing capitalization entering the market. The fintech industry can support the country's goals of financial inclusion, but there needs to be an improvement in certain areas, especially, especially in terms of talent and uh, credit uh, for the sector. So, um, so first is uh, why why do we have to study this uh, sector? Although we've you've seen, uh, we've heard from uh, Dr. Orbeta already uh, why we're doing uh, an analysis of this sector. But just to expound on that, so despite the COVID-19 pandemic, which has disrupted the uh, traditional business models and uh, rearranged economic structures, fintechs continue to grow rapidly and uh, massively. So the market market rapid assessment in 2020 showed that fintech firms reported a year-on-year -year average increase of 13% uh, in the number of transactions and 11% in transaction volumes in the first uh, two quarters of uh, 2021. Uh, Dr. Urbeta has mentioned that uh, from the uh, Oxford's COVID-19 government response tracker, uh, fintech transaction volume in high stringency markets so these are the markets where, um, you know, um, similar to what we have uh, implemented, you know, the, the, the lockdowns have been implemented. So in these types of markets, 50% um, um, fintech uh, volume grew by 50% uh, higher than countries with less stringent uh, COVID-19 response. So this trend is most evident uh, for digital payments that grew 29% uh, in high stringency jurisdictions. So we see the value of fintech uh, as a response for COVID-19. But in addition to that, fintech may help improve the efficiency of financial services and address economic and social issues. As the use of fintech, uh, as the use of digital payment platforms sharply increased during the pandemic, it has implications on the role of fintech in achieving the country's uh, development goals which is enshrined in our uh, Philippine Development Plan 2016 to 2022. And especially in the strategy of strengthening the effectiveness of financial inclusion initiatives by focusing on the efficient delivery of microfinance and microinsurance products for Filipinos, including those living abroad. However, concerns on the use of cryptocurrency and initial currency offerings are recently also surfacing. As these products can potentially make laws and regulations ineffective, particularly against illegal activities and cross-border capital flows, such as money laundering. This therefore poses some regulatory challenges, but also gives more weight to the importance of accurate and timely policies. And finally, regulatory frameworks need to be crafted carefully, as it may not only inspire innovation and improvement, but if uh, applied um, wrongly, it can potentially dissuade and result in instability. So before we continue on, I think it's uh, it would be good if we provide 
a definition of fintech or what do we what exactly are we talking about when we say fintech so fintech um are, can be defined as advances in technology and changes in business models that have potential to transform the provision of financial services through the development of innovative instruments channels and systems therefore fintechs are seen to transform the financial industry by three things. No? So reducing the costs of providing the services, improving the quality and variety of financial services and products, and third is to establish a more stable uh, financial sector. But for the Philippines, there, there is no official definition of index, something that is enshrined in law. As such, the lack of a formal definition provided by law or policy makes it difficult in obtaining official indicators on the performance of the sector. However, there are still several documents that are assessing the, the fintech sector, which can be the foundation for a definition in the country. So the Fintech Alliance of the Philippines considers fintech as the financial services that are deployed through the internet and or the mobile applications. These are usually characterized by more user-friendly interfaces, greater efficiency, transparency, and higher levels of automation than those offered by more the traditional institutions. Uh, similarly, um, in the presentation made the, by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Javier uh, used the definition of the Financial Stability Board that defines fintechs as technology-enabled innovation in financial services that could result in new businesses new business models, application, processes, or products with associated material effects and the provision of financial services. For these financial services, the adoption of technological innovations brings about improvements in operational efficiency, enhanced customer experiences, and more decisive competitive advantage. And finally, one of the more uh, most recent definitions that's uh, on fintech is provided by the Financial Sector Forum, which defines fintech as software, a service, or a business that provides technologically advanced ways to make financial processes and transactions more efficient compared to the traditional method. And this is actually the this the dev, is the definition includes specific descriptions of activities that would be covered by fintechs. And uh, I think this is the most recent one that can be applied by the Philippines to as a foundation for a definition of, of fintech. Um, but I, I think I, I, it's important to say that the, the, the common denominator there is the application of technology, as you can see from all uh, three uh, definitions no? and the disruption that this causes. So uh, for this study, for this paper, we are actually applying a very simple uh, conceptual framework that we have adopted from uh, previous studies that have looked also into the fintech uh, uh, ecosystem in uh, in other uh, jurisdictions in other countries. So uh, some of uh, in the UK and in the US. So a number of uh, conceptual frameworks have been developed to describe the fintech ecosystem. So in a framework used to describe the UK's fintech ecosystem, the model in, um, identified uh, four attributes that support a well-functioning system. So namely its talent pool, the availability of capital, the policy environment, and the demand for FinTech services. And in the middle of all these things is of course, the set of uh, FinTechs uh, in the country. So to describe the FinTech landscape, the, we, we present indicators for each of these aspects using um, secondary data that we've gathered. As, because as I've mentioned, there's no formal definition, and so data is uh, actually a bit limited for uh, for understanding the, the entire uh, ecosystem. And let me just tell you where we're sourcing our data. So for fintech companies, the one in the middle, database um, containing, um, we've con constructed a database containing lists of platforms, fintech reports, and SEC-registered institutions. For talent and uh, academe, um, we looked at indicators on Filipino labor force from the Philippine Statistics Authority and the IMDB, IMD World Competitiveness Report. For demand for fintech, we've sourced uh, our information from BSP's Financial Inclusion Survey and for the Financial um, Inclusion Database of BSP, which contains a demand for fintech and key statistics 
um, regarding consumers and users of financial services. We've also uh, um, conducted key informant interviews to verify our findings and provided the research, uh, provided us with uh, first-hand information and experiences of fintech companies and businesses in the country. So let me now just describe the fintech uh, ecosystem by looking at uh, general trends in, in the country. So for the Philippines, fintech is a very promising as the country has been identified as one of the fast growing fintech destinations as evidenced by new fintech companies that were being created annually. From 2010 to 2018, uh, 2014 was the year with the most fintech companies that were created with a total of 34 new fintech companies. The number of companies created each year since then has dropped steadily with 2018 registering only nine new fintech companies. Investment, however, continued to increase exponentially from 2016 to 2018 at a rate of 762.5%. The employment in these companies have not been reported, but the employment in business and IT-related industries can be used as a somehow a close proxy uh, of employment. And the uh, data from PSA seems to show that the employment in these sectors have not changed significantly since 2014. In 2017, there were 1,268 fintechs in ASEAN, and this is based on um, the ASEAN fintech census. Singapore has the highest concentration, followed by Indonesia. The Philippines had only one had only 115, placing it behind um, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. According to the latest report of BSP, however, the number of fintechs in the country is already 212 as of December 2020, mostly involved in payments, lending, e-wallets, remittances, e-commerce, insurance investments, and even in regulatory technologies. An increase of about uh, 46%. In terms of the value of investments in fintech, Singapore again topped the 27 in 2017 with a total investments of 141 million US dollars. Well, the Philippines came in next with 78 million US dollars, followed closely by Malaysia with 75 million US dollars. Now looking at another source of uh, information, data according to the Global Fintech Index 2020 suggests that the um, Philippines is among the list of countries to watch across the globe, at least it's one of the fastest growing fintech destinations. This is because it has a much higher fintech index ranking than their global startup scores. So as a subset of the global startups, fintechs are rising faster. Ranking the cities in ASEAN for 2021, the index found that Singapore leads the region with 226 fintechs, followed by Indonesia with 88. For the Philippines, the Global Fintech Index found 183 fintechs, placing it third. And um, Okay, um, so, and based on the 2020 rankings, the Global Fintech Index report that um, identified the Philippines and Vietnam as among the countries to watch out for because of its rapidly um, increasing uh, fintech scores. So the strengths of the Philippines are in payments, enabling processes and technology, and uh, banking and lending. So let's expound again. Uh, so who are these uh, fintech players specifically so in where do where can we find them the philippine fintech startup report 2017 released in september 2017 by fintech singapore or singapore fintech association categorized 60 philippine fintech startups into six categories so again so that's payments alternative finance remittances comparison portals credit rating and analytics and payroll or hr majority of which are engaged in payments, which provides mobile commerce and payment services, including e-wallet or digital wallet providers. Alternative financing fintechs also comprise a large share of fintechs, and these include uh, providers of digital loans, micro loans, online pawn shops, and other lending and credit related services, as well as crowdfunding, one-stop loan solutions, and shop now pay later services. Others are engrossed in uh, remittance fintechs, which facilitate international and domestic money transfers, including Bitcoin transfer or exchange. Comparison portals provide analytics, 
comparing products and services suitable for the needs of the consumers, while credit rating and analytics provide solutions to um, asset to assess the credit worthiness of individuals and analytics related to investment decisions, transactions, and investment flows. A fraction of the ecosystem are uh, payrolls or the HR fintechs, which provide uh, HR solutions such as web and mobile application dashboards that consolidate bills, payments, healthcare, insurance, business tools, time and attendance, and end-to-end um, uh, -end payroll solutions, disbursements, computation of taxes and savings. The following year, in 2018, the report identified a total of 126 startups categorized into mobile payments and wallets, remittances, credit scoring, comparison, and additional categories for investment in blockchain and or cryptocurrency. Investment FinTech uh, facilitates um, stock market investments, trading competition, and collaboration. This uh, sector includes a platform uh, in, or platforms that allow investment using Bitcoin and access to global capital markets. Digital financial advisor, stock picking and portfolio management, and even mutual funds investment. Meanwhile, InsureTech, so uh, you can see there, there's, there's one, um, includes a mobile insurance platform and uh, budget dependent insurance options and micro insurance coverage. So, um, the, the variety of uh, fintech services has, has also been expanding, so not just the number of fintechs. So now in 2020, so from a list of SEC registered companies identified to engage in fintech activities, most of the companies in 2020 are into the issuance of virtual currencies, remittance, credit and finance, and lending. Companies engaged in currency exchange and other companies supervised by the BSP follow a little behind. So another source of uh, um, on the fintech ecosystem of the Philippines, the Global Fintech Index by Fintechable. So Fintechable listed total of 170 fintechs in the Philippines in 2020, and this increased and this increased slightly from to 183 in 2021. So among the verticals or sectors, lending and marketplaces fintechs, 34 uh, percent and payment and transfers fintechs 31% dominate the industry. This trend remains the same in 2021, although the shares have declined slightly. In 2021, banking technology, infrastructure, and automation increased sharply from 2020. And this is possibly because of the BSP's policy related to digital banks, although we haven't really tested the, that hypothesis. The increasing number of fintechs in the Philippines and the increasing number of verticals not only indicate an evolving fintech sector, but also indicate a diversifying industry in the country. So now let's just look at the other components. Let's look at the demand. So demand for fintech look at three aspects. How much local market consumers have adopted fintech, how much businesses demand fintech, and the demand of the financial institutions for fintech services. So for consumers, Filipinos are still reliant on traditional financial institutions for access to financial services. In 2019, among the financial access points are institutions where people obtain financial services or make financial transactions. Filipinos are most aware of ATMs, 90%, pawn shops, 82%, and banks, 77%. One of the strengths that the industry can rely on is on the growing participation of consumers in electronic money transactions. So from 2018 to 2019 alone, e-money transactions increased by 36% from 1.09 to 1.5 trillion pesos. Active e-money accounts, on the other hand, increased by 76%. For businesses, in the Philippines, individual demand also dominates 43%. However, the demand from the corporate sector is much larger, 32%, than the demand for SMEs, 19% which may have implications on equity as benefits from the technology could accrue to larger corporations while SMEs would lag behind. The demand for fintech services by companies would be related to their openness to utilize digital technology in their business and transactions. So according to, excuse me, <coughs> according to the IMD uh, World Competitive Index in 2021, Corporate interest in digital transformation in the Philippines has deteriorated since 2017. 
the Philippines has fallen significantly behind its ASEAN neighbors in 2021 regarding the trans transformation of companies. The country also has the lowest usage of big data and analytics. And these are the foundations actually of uh, some fintech services. How about the demand of financial institutions? Data on the demand of financial institutions for fintech services are limited, but information on their participation in digital payments can be proxied by the number of banks participating in the National Retail Payment System, or the NRPS. As more banks participate in the NRPS, the ease of conducting banking and financial transactions increases. As of October 2021, there have been 90 peso net participants composed of 42 universal commercial banks, 17 thrift banks, 27 rural banks, and four e-money users. And there is room for expansion in the QR P2P participants and the P2M uh, participants. How about the availability of capital? <clears throat> Excuse me. The availability of capital ensures that fintechs, which are often startups and scale-ups, can fund the expansion of their operations. Using data on investment deals in uh, the fintech sector from PitchBook Data Inc., a, a private data uh, provider, Corneli et al. in 2021 analyzed the sources of funding of fintechs all over the world and found that a rapidly increasing trend in terms of investments in fintech over the last decade. This can be observed in terms of both the number and value of deals. For the Philippines, the number of fintech deals has been increasing since 2010 to, until 2016 when it reached a peak of 15 fundraising deals. Since 2016, the number of deals has been declining steadily with a slight rebound in 2020. However, it is worth noting that the value of these fundraising deals have also been increasing steadily. Venture capital, VC, is also seen as an important source of funding. <coughs> Excuse me for fintechs in the Philippines. Excuse me. <coughs> when asked if there is a need for more venture capitalists for fintech firms, 87% of fintech respondents from the Philippines mentioned that there is a need for more VCs. In contrast, the proportion is only 67% for Thailand and Vietnam, and 37% for Indonesia, according to the ASEAN FinTech Census. Google, Temasek, and Bain 2021 have found, have found that the first half of 2021, confidence of investors has seen <coughs> a resurgence as indicated by an uptick in deal-making and deal activity. The report is optimistic that investment in digital services is on track to hit the highest record in recent years, as the first half of 2021 has already surpassed the value of deals in 2020. In addition, health tech and egg tech also saw significant um, funding activity in the Philippines as players turned towards the second largest market in the region for future growth. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> to continue, uh, let's look at the talent formation and the role of academia. One of the requirements of the fintech industry to grow and sustain its progress is the availability of competent, talented, and skilled workers and entrepreneurs. Thus, continuous formation of skills for all individuals to fill in the demands in fintech is an important aspect of talent formation. In the country, enrollment in fintech-related disciplines such as business administration and information technology <clears throat> have fluctuated over the years. Huge drops in enrollment in, in these areas have experienced have been experienced in academic years 2016 to 2017 and 2017 to 2018. 
but enrollment has recovered in 2018 to 2019 and since to be sustained since then. Business administration courses are important to the sector as these develop business skills. Data for graduates of business and technology related courses, however, show that there might be a limited supply of fintech talent available in the country that can support the financial services industry in adopting emerging technologies. Okay, so relative to other uh, countries in ASEAN, the performance of the country varies across types of fintech relevant aspects. Regarding the availability of digital or technological skills in the labor force, the country scored 7.23 in 2016, following Singapore's 8.52 and Malaysia's 7.63. Unfortunately, the trend has been decreasing since 2016, with the 2020 score of the country being 6.27. This puts the country last among the five ASEAN countries that have data in the survey. The country, however, is performing well in terms of availability of skilled labor. Since 2016, the Philippines has consistently scored above 6.7 in this aspect, but in 2020, Singapore overtook the Philippines as its score slipped to 6.62. The role of the academe in the formation of talents and skilled individuals is very important for the growth of the fintech industry. In the Philippines, there are a number of higher value institutions, higher educational institutions offering degrees related to fintech and IT related. Very few, if none, however, are directly dedicated to fintech. Two of the country's top universities initiated activities that could address the demand in the industry. One is the Ateneo de Manila University that has set up the first university-based blockchain lab in the country. This, however, has been put on hold indefinitely. The other is the University of the Philippines with its Junior Finance Association and in partnership with the Union Bank of the Philippines FinTech Group, which organized a FinTech immersion program for finance students. Finally, the role of government. Now, looking at the role of the government, the BSP, SEC, and Insurance Commission directly supervise the FinTech industry. The BSP is mandated to create a supportive environment for financial inclusion. On the other hand, the SEC regulates the lending and other financial industries, while the IC uh, regulates and guides the insurance, pre-need, and home maintenance organizations. Other relevant agencies, AMLAC, the ICT, NPC, and TC, also regulate the fintech industries on matters concerning data privacy, security, money laundering, and other and information systems. Given the various entities regulating the sector, the Financial Sector Forum was created as a formalized um, framework for coordination composed of the BSP, SEC, PDIC, and Insurance Commission. The forum aims to provide an institutionalized regulatory framework for coordinating this and the supervision and regulation of the financial system, facilitate consultation and the exchange of information and ideas among regulators and provide a platform to harmonize the regulation of financial products offered by the various types of financial institutions. In terms of supporting the innovation, infrastructure, and promotion, the BSP launched the National Retail Payment System to foster uh, digital payments and support the growth of fintechs. The NRPS promotes, among others, interoperability, the state when end users or consumers are able to transfer funds from one account to another account in any participating BSP supervised financial institution. By enabling interoperability, sustained adoption of electronic payments is possible as electronic transactions are made more convenient. NRPS likewise facilitates and supports the delivery of a wide range of financial products that cater to the need of all users. In addition, the BSP has also issued other policies, such as on the regulation of VASPS and the venture capitals, and the guidelines on e-commerce and digital applications. The BSP also encouraged financial institutions to lend to MSMEs, as well as implemented a regulatory standbox to bring together fintech stakeholders. The Philippine government is in support of emerging industries 
through the Philippine Innovation Act of 2019, or RA 11293, which promotes the diffusion of knowledge as a driver of national development and provides technical and financial support for scaling up and marketization of industries. So now let's look at the strengths and weaknesses of the fintech industry. The industry can rely on the the, the industry can rely on these strengths. First is the growing participation in e-money transactions. So from 2018 to 2019 alone, e-money transactions have posted 36% growth rate, while e-money accounts have grown 76%. So opportunities are abundant with the incessant and increasing financial needs and behaviors of the people. There's also an increased access to technology. So as technology serve as access points for consumers, it is advantageous that more people are gaining access to technologies. Access to smartphones and the internet allow users to get acquainted with digital financial products and services. There's also a growing number of mobile phones and internet users. The number of mobile phone and internet users continue to grow annually, which presents an opportunity for the fintech industry to penetrate a potential market. There's uh, progressive and uh, coordinated uh, government regulators. Regulators are generally receptive to the introduction of the Philippines, to the introduction of the Philippines of fintech products and services that have been introduced in many other countries, subject to the regulators' imposition of certain conditions for the protection of the public. And uh, open and supportive uh, regulatory environment. The open and supportive regulatory environment of the fintech sector can be considered as a strength. The regulator, regulatory sandboxes for fintech and insurtech allows for innovation in the delivery of digital financial services without sacrificing security of the market. On the other hand, the sector is troubled with the following weaknesses. So there are issues arising from access points and distrust from using technologies. Of the total number of Filipino adults who transacted with access points in 2019, 37% encountered issues, significantly larger than those encountered issues in 2017, which is only about 6%. Although 84% of the issues encountered are resolved, a noticeable 16% are not resolved, as many are not aware what, that the regulators can be contacted or wish to avoid the hassle. There's also a lack of awareness and the usage of technologies for financial transactions. So despite an increasing number of Filipinos owning mobile phones and having access to the internet, most are not aware how to utilize such for financial transactions. There's poor connectivity and high cost of internet, and unreliable internet connection discourages users from transacting digitally. Preference for cash transactions due to lack of trust is also a weakness. We have also seen gaps in policy and regulatory environment. So lack of formal regulations or, and definitions affects prospective fintech players as approval of fintech services are solely reliant on regulators. Imposition of out-of-date policies of, on the new sector, for example, the archaic How about some opportunities and threats? So in terms of opportunities, relatively open digital environment for integration with other countries in the region, as can, can be seen in a different paper that we have released last year. There's also a sustained use of digital payments and fintechs after the onset of the pandemic. So with restrictions to, the, to mobility, the country was forced to adopt new methods of doing things. So the use of online marketplaces and e-money for purchasing items has significantly increased. Thus, this serves as a catalyst for the industry to develop faster than anticipated prior to the pandemic. And uh, it's it, it sustained, actually. It's sustained even after the pandemic. So there are also incentives and support from the government. So various tax incentives provided by the government to SMEs on the onset of the pandemic have stimulated companies to recalibrate and move their timelines to avail of such incentives. The creation of a national center for AI research. So, for example, various initiatives have been undertaken, uh, one of which is the e-commerce roadmap and then the artificial intelligence roadmap. 
And central to the AI roadmap is the creation of a national center for AI research that houses full-time scientists, research engineers, which can support the AI competitiveness of the country and in turn um, be used as a foundation for um, fintech uh, growth and development. On the other hand, there are several threats that may hamper the growth of the sector, such as limited venture capital available to support the growth of startups, and also the lack of digital and technological talent. Recognizing that the right skills are crucial to the adoption of new technologies, the industry has expressed concern regarding the lack of digital and technological talent. There's also a need for detailed and systematic sources of information, so the lack of statistics in the sector prevents an a thorough assessment of its progress. <clears throat> Competition from other ASEAN nations. So neighboring countries are positioning themselves as fintech hubs in the region. So aside from in Singapore, there's Indonesia and Vietnam, and they're already organizing themselves as the next fintech powerhouse in the region. So given these uh, SWOT, given this SWOT, this study finds that the Philippines has a strong fintech industry, as indicated by the number of fintechs, as well as an uh, increasing um, capitalization. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought about significant increase in demand for digital services, and various studies note that the adoption of digital technology will be sustained in the coming years. However, several issues remain at hand that must be addressed in order for the sector to fully flourish. So just some uh, final words and recommendations. So despite having um, indications of a strong fintech industry, the ecosystem still needs to be strengthened for the sector to fully thrive. In particular, interventions and initiatives could focus on first reviewing the policies and regulations. So especially the ones that are already archaic. While the sector benefits from a well-coordinated and forward-looking uh, set of regulators, Policies and laws must be revisited and reviewed. It is imperative to have a policy on fintech that would define and monitor the progress of the sector. The development of Philippine skills framework. As human capital is essential to the rapid growth of the fintech industry, it's high time for the government and academic institutions to revisit concern, um, policies concerning higher education institutions and update the curriculum to make graduates more competent. Collaboration among government, industry, and academic community to develop skills framework that would support the upskilling and reskilling of the country's workers for their particular job roles. Third, uh, the next administration and the Philippine Development Plan. In crafting for its next Philippine Development Plan, the incoming administration must address issues in the use of fintech among Filipinos, specifically in areas concerning education, information, dissemination, Improvements in ICT access, an enabling environment for fintech players, inclusivity across regions and uh, rural areas, in the protection of data privacy and security, and others. So um, the government must ensure there's a uh, fair playing field for new entrants to participate and uh, penetrate uh, the market. So the, this is the end of uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to the discussion. Thank you.